Welcome to Shaila and Kezia PowerPoint Sabbath School, where we simply love Sabbath School. Happy Sabbath and welcome back to Shaila and Kezia's PowerPoint Sabbath School. I hope you enjoy. This week's Sabbath school lesson. Our topic for this week is the giant and the rock. A young man, David, reached the top of the last hill. He had to climb and look down. His father had sent him with supplies for his three older brothers who had been camped here with the army for several weeks. And there was a silence all around him. All they see is from the lines of the top of the Philistines. An enormous man swaggered forward. As Goliath spoke, everyone went quiet. He said, send a man over to fight me. You cowards, it thundered. If your man wins, the Philistines will be your servants. But if I win, the Israelites will be our servants. David wanted, waited for someone to accept the challenge, but no one was, but no one moved. Goliath shouted louder. He shook his huge spear in his rage. David was determined that he wanted to fight Goliath. So he went to the king, very confident in himself. The king said, why you are just a boy. Despite all this, David showed his determination. And in the end, he went out to fight Goliath. God was with him. David stepped onto the battlefield. 
with his three rocks and his slingshot. David started running and then Goliath. David swings around his slingshot and then BAM! It hit Goliath out in his head and he fell onto the ground. The Israelites won. Sabbath friends, welcome to this week's lesson. Today, we have a very special guest with us today. I would like to thank Kaylin Chambers for joining us today, and she is from the Cayman Islands. Hello, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Thank you for having me on your program. You're welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We pray that this program is a blessing to others and may it reach people worldwide and may this program lead others to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 The pow this week's lesson is a well, very well known story to us all and it is David and Goliath. And this week's lesson is lesson 10 and the topic is the giant and the rock. This week's power text is, for the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Psalms 149 verse four. And this week's PowerPoint is, God is our champion. He wins the victory for us. Now today, we have someone else asking the questions and um, it is our very own Shyla Scavella, our co-hostess, and she will be asking our questions for today. So take it away, Shyla. Okay, so the question is, how do you think David felt about being left behind to tend the sheep? Can I, may I go first? Yes, I think based on all the stories that I've heard of David, I think David was very obedient. I don't, I don't think David was a normal, regular child, just based on the Bible stories that we would have heard of him. So I think him going out and, 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 and being a shepherd wasn't an issue for him. Like, he just seemed to, if his daddy said, David, go do this, he'd be like, how high or how low? Like, I think he was, he was very obedient, and so he probably enjoyed doing this. I have an answer to... Um, when he was left behind, I don't think he was really happy because he wanted to go with his brothers into battle, but to be left behind and they were mocking him about his size, saying that he wasn't ready to go into battle. So I thought, I think he wasn't really happy that he was left behind. Um, just like Kaylin said, I don't think he would be he would be he wouldn't be happy that he was left behind because if I was left behind if some if I'm the youngest and all of my brothers or some or my siblings older siblings get to go and do something and I don't get to do it I'll feel bad and then I'll say oh um they're not being fair and all type of stuff so I would not feel good at all I think um, also, I, I agree with what, what both of you are saying, but in terms of context, um, based on tradition, the younger child, like I'm sure all of the other brothers were all shepherds. Like it's just something that you know that's your role. Like that's what you do. And so David being left behind, yes, I agree with both of you that indeed he probably felt some way because I would feel some way also if all my siblings would get up and go somewhere without me. But I also believe that David knew his place and David knew his role. So um, I see what you girls are saying and I agree with it, but also... In my mind, I'm thinking David just knew that his place was right now with the sheep. So it was I. Shai Shai, you were saying something? I would be kind of pissed off because everybody gets to do something and I don't get to do it. It's not, it won't be fair to me. All of my other siblings get to do what they want to do. With, all of my other siblings get to do their fun stuff and I guess get to watch the sheep. 
but going to war is fun. Getting killed, the possibility I of getting killed. Like well, that. I probably it's think to him it would have been exciting. Pardon? I say probably to him it would have been exciting. Because, like, y'all talking about we getting left behind to go to a war, like, y'all could leave me. Like, if we were siblings <laughs> and there was a war and they called for Kaylin, Gethy, and Shiloh, I want y'all to go. I'll push y'all out the door. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be mad to say one to go to battle. <laughs> um, like Miss Kenesha said, David probably knew his place and his brothers obviously were old enough or adults and they were old enough to go to war so i think yes david did know his place and um yes david knew his place so i wouldn't be like miss kenesha said i wouldn't be excited to go to war but like in modern time if your yeah. if your older brother or your older sister get to go to a party and you don't get to go to the party I, you feel bad yeah now that's a different scenario definitely yes but because party's fun. Well, wars, uh, not so much. <laughs> but it's drama, though. I mean, it's drama. Okay. Hmm. It's good to hear your insights, though. Oh, not really. But it feels like they didn't hear what you said or... Um, they don't really care about what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And based on the question that Shyla just asked, I'm assuming she is, she asked this question because probably David felt like that. But could you imagine how many brothers did David have? Like David was the last of how many kids? Mm -hmm. A lot. <laughs> it was a lot. So I'm sure him being the baby of the group like really i'm sure Dave, david's eldest brother was probably in his what let's let's make a guesstimation he was probably in his early 30s late 20s and here comes this little teeny bop like and it's like so many of the brothers i could see i could understand why they were probably not listen to david because it's like uh this child <laughs> so Shyla, you asked the question, have you ever do you ever feel that way? Did I uh, you ask him if I was asked it again? No, no, you asked the question. So we're wanting to find out the question that you asked, do you ever feel that same way? Uh yes, mom. In school, like Azia said, with the fighting, like teachers don't actually listen to you that much. Mm. Adults tend to, adults are guilty of that. We tend to not really want to listen because in your in our minds, it's like, oh, you're just a child and you're supposed to listen to what I'm saying. So what I say is right and you just need to listen to me. But it's like, we don't program our minds to say, oh, yes, we do all have voices too so that we need. That means we need to listen to what you all have to say. Okay, our next question is, do you think David was scared of Goliath? I don't think he was scared because when he, when his father sent him on the errand to um, give the supplies to his brothers, and he saw the giant and he saw the rest of the soldiers running away. So he was asking why they were running away. He saw how tall he was, but he didn't seem afraid. Like he sounded like he wanted to just walk up to him and just fight him just like that. I agree with Kaylin because I mean, David did tell Saul like, I've slayed lions and bears like so. If I see a bear, I'm not standing around to try and figure out who's battle. Like, I'm not going to go down that road. But Brother David seems to have been so fearless that he's fought off a bear and he's fought off a lion. So the lion was just another thing for him to say, oh, okay. All right. I think, uh, I think, I think he was scared because... 
Why would you be scared if you have God on your side? You could just put all your trust in him. I like that you said that, Shiloh, but how many of us really put that into practice? Like, we have exams. Do you really say, man, God got this. God on my side. I'm not yes, going to work. Yes, I actually really do, do that. that. That is excellent. That is excellent. I need to learn that because I still have my moments where I'm fearful. And yes, I'm a Christian and I know God and I will encourage everybody to come on the winning side. But I have my moments where it's just like, oh, fear takes over. So that's good, right. Shiloh. Right before the test, like, and the class pray, and then right before I do, like, go to write on the page, I pray again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kudos to you. Um, if I have, if, I, if David was afraid of Goliath, um, I don't think so. I bet, like, me, half of me is scared and the next half of me isn't. So I think half of him, like a tinsy bincy quarter of him was saying, um, I don't know if I could do this. But then the rest of him was saying, okay, I got God on my side. I got this. I could beat this giant. I could do anything. So I think part of him was a bit scared and part of him wasn't. But I think mostly it was that he can do it and that God can do anything. I think, you know, those people who you see who, like, they have this confidence about them, and then sometimes we look at them and say, oh, they know, or they think so highly of themselves. Could you imagine David's brothers? Like, that's probably the look that they were giving him, because this little tiny, teeny, teeny, teeny dot, talking about he can go out there and fight this big giant. Like, if I was one of the brothers there, honestly... I would have been laughing. I would have been laughing, and I probably would have been upset. Like, I do you know, like, how they walk up to kid, um, <laughs> big siblings will walk up to the little siblings and just tap them in the back of their head and be like, move. Like, I feel like I would have been one of those siblings after David's there, puffing his chest that he's so big and brave. Like, I'd have just walked up to him and say, go home. <laughs> like, that's how I honestly would have been like, because this tiny, 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 tiny thing. But I guess, as Shiloh said, when you have God on your side, what are you supposed to be afraid of? <laughs> um, like, um, it, it, it. I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but if David was my younger sibling and he pop up talking about he going to fight Goliath and he see everybody, all the older people running and he talking about he going to fight Goliath. Three parts to me. One, I would have been upset. Why? Because that's, you sh like in the in the Bahamas, they can say you showing me up, basically. Cause yes, <laughs> you showing me, me up. up. And <laughs> I'm afraid, and you talking about you ain't scared. That would make me very <laughs> upset. Two, I would be very scared for him because I don't want my younger brother to die. And yeah, that's about it. That's just two parts. I'd be very, 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 very upset with him. I can add the third. I want to know who keeping the sheep. Like, why are you here? Exactly. Who keeping the sheep? Wait, why are you here? Your role is to sheep. <laughs> Your role is to shepherd. Why are you here? <laughs> Would have been my well, question. Yeah. And I'd also be confused because, I mean, you rejected the king's armor and then come pop up with a sling and stones. That is nothing comparing to what those warriors wear. Nothing. So I'd be confused, very confused with them. Very. Tyler, what would you be? I would be completely shocked. I would be numb in my face. I would just look at him like, boy, who do you think you is? <laughs> It's true, because this little, this little tiny dot just appear. 
we've been here days on days. Like we're trained. We've been to, we are men of war. We've been to war. We know what war looks like. And this little shepherd boy. Kaylin, who is he? Why? Like the confidence that, 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 that David had, is that a confidence that we all should have? Yes, ma'am. But if I were, if I were sent on an errand, if I were sent on the errand that David were sent, that David was sent on, I would just deliver the supplies to my brothers and just go home because I don't want to get caught up in the battle or anything. I wouldn't be like David and just wanting to go up to Goliath and fight him like that. I have a question and it is, do you think that the faith that David had, is it in you and how do you, how does it shine through you? Hmm. My honest answer to that is, I pray to have faith like that. I, I I want to really and truly have faith like that. <laughs> it's something that today I feel like I have all the faith in the world. And then tomorrow a situation will come up and I'm like, oh my goodness. Sometimes fear comes up first instead of um, instead of faith. So David's faith is something I honestly pray for. It's something I pray to consistently have. But yeah, God and I are still working on that. <laughs> so do I. I I really pray that I have that faith because even at school, like when I forgot to do something, I just pray and. I try to leave it completely in God's hands, but sometimes I just keep on worrying about it. Mm -hmm. I also agree with both of those answers because I don't always have faith before the other stuff. So I would probably be in fear before I have faith as well. Um, I don't know if I have that much faith because honestly, I am sometimes not the most, people don't know me, I am a positive person, but like out there I am, but like sometimes when I'm at home or something and I'm worrying about something, I normally think of the negative first and say, oh, what if this happens? And then after I say, what if this happens? And I think, what can that lead up to? And all the bad things. So I don't have all of that much faith. I am working on that. But um, if I did have that faith, um, it, sh it would shine probably through me um, by like through my through, through me talking to my friends, I'll tell I'll probably tell them, oh, I forgot my homework or something. And like they can see that I am not worrying, that I have enough faith to keep me from dying panic. from panic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they'll see that I have enough strength and faith from panicking. So I think that would shine through me in like my everyday life. Yeah. David's faith is something that I really desire. Like, because that, that's, that's what you call a giant of a faith right there. To know that here is this huge man with the history of being this warlord, like he's won so many battles. I'm sure he has killed and harmed so many people. But yet this tiny buffer, this teeny teeny baby is gonna be walking up to this giant with such a history and and, and almost tell him like, 
I need you to get your house in order because you don't know who you are up against. Like, that's basically what David was telling him. Like, do you know who I am? Do you know who I serve? And I'm sure his voice probably sounded so squeaky <laughs> because Goliath is so tall. So I'm sure that um, Goliath was probably just hearing this little squeaky voice talking to him and Goliath in his head was probably dying with laughter. I think if, if Goliath, in my imagination, Goliath could have just done this <laughs> and just, just flicked David away. <laughs> And just this little thing come in to threaten me, big old me, does he know who I am? <laughs> so I want that thing. I, I want that. I need that thing. Yeah. Um, and based on what I have read, um, when I was reading the lesson and they was going on patriarchs and prophets, I read that Goliath, from he was a child, he was trained to work in the army. He has done this for all of his life. And mm -hmm. for me to come, who never fought a real person in my life, or, or somebody who was a giant in my life, and only fought little animals who were like a joke, for me to come and just face this, this giant, without any fear, I mean, he probably had a little bit of fear, but to come there without any sign of fear and to face this person who has been trained from a child, that is amazing. Like how you said that is a giant of faith, of a faith. So that is amazing. Yep. And that's the faith God wants us to have. He needs us to have that that same confidence where it can almost come across as if you're showing off. But it's just that you just have this much confidence in God to know that God has me. No matter what, God has my back. Um, oh. Yeah, like, I need that for you. Like you said, like, kind of like showing off. And it wouldn't be really considered showing off because, I mean, we're kind of like showing off God. Yeah. We have faith from God. So we're not like showing off for our own glory. We're showing off for God's glory. And yes. we need to have the faith of a mustard seed, people. And you know, mustard seed is tiny. Very, very, very. How many mustard seed faith do you think David had? <laughs> Woo, that's some faith. So yeah, the story of David is in an encouraging one to just let us know that we can beat the odds with Christ, with God on our side. Because if we list off all the things that should have gone wrong with David going up against Goliath, David should have been the one whose head was chopped off that day. David should have been the one whose eulogy was being prepared. Like it, it should not have been David. Um, shouldn't, it shouldn't have been Goliath. But the faith of that tiny man, man, and that also says, no matter how small you are, or probably how insignificant you think you are, with God, like, you are bigger than, bigger, you're bigger than the word, babe. You're bigger than the word, <laughs> you're bigger than that word, and if you have that faith, if we all have that faith of David, that's my heart's desire, um, I it. I have one more question, and then Shyla can do some more questions if she wants. Um, what are some things that makes you afraid, and how does reading the Bible help you? Mm. Mm. I see Kaylin. I see the wheels turning in Kaylin's head. <laughs> Okay, I'll start. For me, some of the things I'm afraid of, I don't like to see people sick. I have, a, I, I, I don't like sickness at all. It's, it's a fear of mine. And yeah, it's a fear of mine. And how I use the Bible to help me, I, that's a very good question because I, I, there are times I'm good at saying, God, I'm trusting in you. 
God, you say that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And like, I can repeat the promises to myself. And then there are other times where it's just like, Lord, how can you sit there and see all of this happening and not do anything? And so it's, it's a struggle. That's an area of struggle for me because I really don't like it. And I think about the negatives first before I think of the positives. But what I am thankful for is that God has the patience with me, that he allows me to go through the motions. And then I eventually get back on board where I'm like faith, having hope, believing. And so he gives me that time to come back home, to, to bring it back to center and saying, yes, God, I say I believe in you. So yes, I'm going to trust you and your will, let your will be done. So yeah. That's one of the fairies. So, I, I don't not like to see blood. That's what I don't like to see a lot of blood. Like when somebody like hurts. Um, no, I no, that's not for me. <laughs> and then when I see people like hurt, like just hurt on the whole, it's just make yeah. me feel like I cannot be there and stuff like that. And how do you use the Bible to? I just probably I walk away or I just tell them um I hope you feel better better and I walk away. Mm. Okay. Kaylin do you have any fears or well I'm afraid of disobeying God or mm. sinning. But when I read the Bible and look at the experiences that other people had, like the Israelites, they've sinned so many times, even after God time and time again, delivered uh -huh. them through their problems. Uh -huh. When they go on their knees and they pray, God, with his caring heart, he forgives them. Yes. Um. Right now, I don't have any fears. Not that I can think of one right off my off the bat, but I was very afraid of water. I had aquaphobia, and I all like afraid of going to the deep and not letting. And if my feet can't up, yeah, up to now, if my feet cannot touch the ground in the water. I will panic and seeing seaweed like a black area in the water, I will jump over that, skip over that, or want someone back or just stand there and don't go over it. So I am a fear of anything black in the water that I cannot see. So I ask God to help me with that. And now I can go in water um freely but um i asked i went i went in the bible and i can and inside philippians 4 verse 13 it says i can do all things through christ who strengthens me so i prayed to god and asked him if i if i put in the work to, mm -hmm. to um fight my fear and try at least will you help me in the mm -hmm. fear of water Mm. And so I did, it's funny because I watch videos, my mommy and my friend teases me because I watch videos on YouTube and when I was younger, I used to swim inside the bed. It's funny. It's very funny. But anyway, that actually worked. And now I could manage myself in the water. So all I could say is thank you, God, for helping me to get over that prayer. Because I don't know if one day I'll need to use it. I also have a next one. I can't, like, like in the water, right? You know how they have them Chinese pools and, like, everybody inside the floaty and they all stuck together. You can't see what under you. Like, that is giving me a fear. Like, I can't, when I swim in, I have to see what on the bottom of me. If not, that's not. Mm -mm. I'm like that up to the day. Mm. Um, I actually have another one. Like, it's, it's not severe, but 
I have a tendency to have claustrophobia. If it's, if it's like really, really, really crowded, I have a problem with that. And if like for some reason, sometimes, that's not all the time because as I said in a previous video, I am not always the most organized person. But like if I just have a bunch of stuff on the table and it's just really cluttered, sometimes I feel suffocated. So, <laughs> so I have a little bit of claustrophobia at times. So I ask God to help me with that. And the same thing, Philippians 4 verse 13, if I try to be more organized, that should help me with my claustrophobia. So that's mm -hmm. how the Bible helps me. Okay, awesome. Any more questions? No, mom. Okay. So I guess Kezia can, we can, how do we close up? So everyone, uh, I have two riddles for you once again. And for in this Zoom call, um, it is, why was David considered a good babysitter? Why was David considered a good babysitter? And this is a riddle. Why mm -hmm. was David? Because if he could take care of sheep, and sheep are very hard to take care of. They be running around every minute. They have you have to feed them. You they be running. They get lost easy. That's like a lot of work. That's more than a child work to take care of. So is I it, think you would be a perfect babysitter. Is it because he knows how to put you to sleep? Um, that is close. Both of those answers are a bit close, but those are not the answers. Hmm. Kaylin, do you have a answer? Thinking. Maybe because he's brave enough to be put up to the task, I guess, since he was brave enough to fight Goliath. No. Okay. Because he what? could sing. Answer. And because he could sing? That is actually a good answer, but that is not the answer. What's the answer? Does everyone give up? Yes, ma'am. Drum roll, please. <laughs> the answer is, is because he rocked Goliath to sleep. Oh, <laughs> I said that. Oh, I knew it had something but, to do with sleep. Yes, okay. it has something to do with sleep. I, it has something and to do with he, sleep. Like, he rocked him, rocked he him rocked to sleep. sleep. <laughs> Good luck. So... This week's riddle is, I'm one of five, I'm not alive, the one who sent me forth became king, and the one who received me died. Who am I? Please send all of your answers at powerpointsabbathschool at gmail.com. Once again, powerpointsabbathschool at gmail.com. Thank you for all of your answers, and we hope to see you next week with your answers. Thank you. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.